Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, this is Blake Johnson with N Topology. I'm going to be talking about serial serialization of um, designs that you create in NTOP. And um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. So what we're going to show here is how a, um, a bunch of designs can really easily be made uh, in NTOP uh, that have slight variations. And when you have these uh, variations, um, it's a really good opportunity for uh, running a bunch of simulations and evaluating things or, or even printing wide ranges of, of um, parts and then uh, evaluating them by testing them uh, in the physical world. So, so actual mechanical tests or thermal tests or whatever you want to do. And, um, you know, it's really actually an important tool in your toolbox when you're working with lattices and, you know, really complex structures because it's difficult to intuit intuitively understand how these um, types of structures are going to behave in the real world. So uh, a lot of it is empirical and uh, a lot of it requires design of experiment, things like that. So it's a lot of parameters to, to play with in NTOP. And so I'm going to talk about how you can, uh, you know, generate a bunch of geometries, design variations, whatever you want to call them. And then uh, not only that, but, but maintain a, uh, a serial number or at some kind of index physically on the the part because uh, it can be hard to keep track especially in a large company of, of the source of, um, of parts and, and where they were made when they were made you know there's all kinds of information that um, gets lost in in, in everyday uh, engineering companies and um, it's nice to have something printed on right and, and to be able to do that within your design of experiment so uh, there's a few steps to this that I'm going to walk through, um, including kind of generating a series of parts using list processing, um, arraying them in a, in a way to visualize all of them, uh, and then generating text in NTOP, which is a totally new application I don't think has been explained anywhere. Um, and it's kind of a, an interesting way we do it. Uh, and then um, you know, joining those together and exporting a part. And then in the end, we'll have some time for, for questions. Um, so let's let's take a look at the uh, first block in this notebook here. And what I have here is a compound block or a custom block. Uh, so I made this block. The inputs and the outputs are specified in another file, um, which is here. And what this file does is it simply creates a cantilever that has a lattice uh, filled in in the midsection. And so um, I won't get into the workflow here. It's very simple, but basically you have this center lattice and some boxes and we join them together with a blend radius and we specify a few things that are uh, valuable to us like the lattice thickness, the type of lattice. So I can change this and I'll regenerate. Uh, yeah, blend radius, lattice thickness, and, and, and the unit cell. Um, so this is, this is a, little tool in the toolbox here. I, I save this and I go to another NTOP file and I can import. So if I go to file import and look at this lattice cantilever generator, uh, I now have that in my search bar. So you see I'll lattice cantilever generator. Uh, so let's just create this block, right? Uh, it looks just like in the other file. Um, but I did a little trick here to not only create one of these designs, but actually uh, four of them. And I can create uh, a number of parts uh, of, of any you know, amount uh, varying any of these parameters that are important to me. So, so the, the unit cell, the lattice thickness, and the blend radius. So in this example, I have four different lattice types. And uh, this list was created by typing uh, volumetric rule list. So now this rule list I can fill with all kinds of lattices, blah, 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 you know, just pick different ones. Um, and if you drag this into, I'll go ahead and show what this looks like. If you lattice generator, if I, if you just drag this in here, all of your lattices will be created. So you see this is a list because we put a list inside a block. And there's three items um, and 
as you see, they're overlapped, which isn't very useful or intuitive uh, to someone trying to distinguish between these. So another trick is to array these bodies, um, which I've, I've done to the original bodies list here. I can array these bodies uh, by a certain amount um, and in a certain direction. And I've set this up to be uh, to work for however many items I have in the list. So this is just some more list processing tricks. Hopefully, well, if you're watching this video, you can learn some of these tricks uh, for all kinds of NTOP stuff. But in this case, um, it's useful for visualizing a list of bodies, right? And so I have an original vector of how much I want the uh, body to move for every uh, new version or iteration. And I also have this uh, scalar list, which is a sequence. So if I go in here and I look, it's a sequence that starts at zero and increments negative one and, and counts a certain number of times. And the count here is the size of the list of bodies. So if I have a list of four bodies here, then the uh, size has been pulled into this value here. And so I have a uh, a scalar list that goes 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And if I were to have more bodies, it would go negative 4, negative 5, et cetera. And so if I do a multiplication of this vector list times the sequence here of iterations, uh, you see these are all translation vectors that are shifting the bodies down. And so that's just a little visualization trick. I then can put that into a translate object block where I put my bodies list into the object and the vector list in the input. And I'll say, okay, take the first body, translate it by the first vector. Take the second body, translate it by the second vector. Uh, so, so this is list processing again, and the result ends up looking like this. So we go from this to this by using this little trick. And again, if I were to change the number of uh, items in this list, it would continue to, to distribute them as we, uh, as we need. Um, so, so that's that's a good technique for for uh, generating these design variations. But now, how do we uh, put text on them to identify them um, after we print them, or, or you know, as they change hands throughout um, an engineering process? So uh, now I'm going to talk about another little compound block that's in this file, and it's called Serialize, and it just is a tool for generating text. Um, specifically, it generates a, a kind of part number or, or a static uh, piece of text, and then followed by a number that changes. So you know you might have your your part number and then a serial number. That's that's the idea here. And in this case, we just wrote uh, in the item name. That's what kind of what I'm calling part number. Uh, N top dash, and then a is the, the index. So this can change to be any number or letter. Um, and you'll see it working. And I'll, and I'll, I'll explain how this block works. Um, but just first, the inputs, you know, we have a text size and a letter spacing value. So that'll change how, yeah, how they're spaced out. And, and also a position. So we can move this and place it anywhere in the um, XYZ position that we want. Uh, and then this directory has to point to uh, a, a database of files. So um, I will show the, the compound block and that'll make a little more sense. So this serialize uh, block, it uses actually CAD objects uh, to fill in, um, the, the, uh, to, to generate the geometry. Uh, so you can see we have this import uh, block here and it's um, being scaled and um, and turned into a, uh, a implicit body. So it's just easy to, to pass through and, and, and manipulate and Boolean and all that stuff. Um, and I'm not gonna go through all the little logic steps here, but, but what's happening here is for all the text that we have in here, uh, which includes you know, this um, item name or part name, and then an index, uh, we go out and we look for files that uh, correspond to each of these characters. So all of the characters are in this file or this folder. You'll see it has, you know, um, dot dash, pe comma, period, and then all the numbers and letters. 
Um, so, so it's actually going out and fishing for these CAD files and putting them together in a Boolean union. And then you have that part or that, that, um, that body that uh, you can use to serialize. And um, that's why we can only really call like individual letters at a time. So if I want to say N top, I put in an N T O P and then a dash. Uh, and then we, we, um, we have this last one. And, and so um, I'll explain why these are separated, right? But it's, it's basically so that we can have a static piece of text and then change out the second piece of text, um, which is you know the, the index. So let's go back to this file and we'll see um, this in action. So again, you know, I can just put in whatever I have here. And um, that's just to, to demonstrate the block. I'm going to get rid of that block and I'm going to show, excuse me, I'm going to show how to um, use list processing to generate a whole bunch of serializations. And again, we have the same item name, the, the starter, uh, uh, you know, the static text, I should say, that's not going to change. But then we have this uh, chip here that's been placed in the index. And so what happened there is I created a indices list. Uh, and I used, again, the sequence block like I used for the translation vectors. But the sequence block uh, takes in the um, increment and the body size just like before. And I went ahead and went into the properties of this block and looked for uh, the text that would give me a nice clean 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, however many bodies I have. And so that ends up being, if you look at this, uh, round and then text. So, so let me explain what that means. If I go to the properties here and I pull the text of the the scalar values, they're going to have these zeros. And I don't want to deal with the zeros. But that's because they're scalars. So they, they have automatically, when you convert to text, they have all these zeros. But if you go to uh, round here, you can get the integer values. And then you can go into the properties of the rounded numbers. And if you pull the text here, you'll get nice, clean 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so um, this indices list goes directly into this. And what we end up with are a list of serial number bodies um, or serializations. You see they're overlaid right now, just like we had this body overlaid or this body list overlaid where that's you know all of them in the same position. So here we have the same thing, right? Well, uh -oh, we have all of them. So I'm going to use the same trick I did for the bodies. Uh, I have this arrayed bodies where I put in the vector translation list or the, the translation vector list and the bodies, I'm going to do the same thing with the labels. So if I isolate this view, I've put labels in here. I've used the same translation vector list here. And we've generated our labels in the correct position. And if we look at those with the arrayed bodies, we'll see all of our things have labels. And just to demonstrate how cool this is, I'm going to go ahead and add um, I'm not sure which lattice will look cool, but that one works. Uh, I can just add another to this list. I could take away, I could change the values, and everything is going to populate automatically. So let me save that. And we have a few more steps. Um, so you see one, zero, one, two, three, four. So we have a few more steps, and, and the next thing I'm going to do is uh, you know, okay, this is very useful to say, here they are, we can visualize them, but how about actually getting them out? How about choosing them, you know, say like, okay, this is the one that looks like it's going to work, or this is the one I want to print. Um, so I have one more block that's just a, a unioning of the label with the body. And um, it allows me with this variable here, chosen iteration, to choose the one I'm interested in to look at. So again, if I if I show all of them, let me um, let me show all of them, and I say, okay, let's go with n top four. I just need to go in here and press four, and it's going to pull from these listed uh, bodies and labels and union apart together. So if I look at this, it's in that original position because uh, I'm using the non-arrayed labels and bodies, and we have this nice. Um, 
uh, body ready to go. And again, this list element, if you're not familiar with it, or, or um, yeah, if you're not familiar with the list element block, all it's doing is you have a list and you need to pull some uh, single value from it. You just give it the list and you give it the index. And in this case, you know, the chosen iteration and it will uh, create this single body from that list. So I'm basically just pulling from the labels list and the bodies list and, and unioning it together. And here we have our part. Uh, so one last step is to export this as a mesh. Uh, so you can go through and, and you could either uh, say, oh, I want all of these bodies to um, go out to files or this one's interesting, this one's not, um, it's up to you. But however you manage to, to set this up, this NTOP notebook will export a mesh file. So it'll, it'll mesh the chosen body as we see here. And it will export a file that's named uh, the, the iteration number dot obj. And that's all done automatically. So I have a uh, chosen iteration dot text uh, concatenated in a text file uh, with the directory I'm in and the dot obj. So if I look in here, this is some directory I have and I have one dot obj. And if I change this to two, it will change the file name to two dot obj and it'll create a mesh from that and it'll uh, export it. So if I go into my folder I'm working on, I've, I've chosen these and now I have uh, mesh files and, and those could be STLs or you could convert it to any kind of geometry you want to export. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the idea. So, so uh, to recap, you know, we've, we've created a compound block that creates a geometry from some kind of key inputs. And then we uh, use list processing to create a whole bunch of variations there. And we use uh, translation vector lists uh, to visualize them, so to array them in space so we can just see them. Uh, we created labels for each of them individually. And then we also arrayed those. And uh, then we picked a, made a little tool to select one of the variations and export it and view it as a single body. Um, so with that, uh, I think I can wrap up. I'm going to check for questions first. And um, thank you for viewing. So looks like we don't have any questions. Um, yep. OK, so it looks like we don't have any questions. Uh, these files will be available um, below. And, uh, and I uh, hope you have a great day. And thanks for, um, thanks for learning a little more about NTOP with me. And I'll catch you next time.